All right. Welcome back to the compiler series, specifically the four loop, four iteration series. This has been really fun. I'm really excited. Um, let's sum up what we've done so far. So in our little language currently, uh, we have these nice growable built-in arrays, um, just named array, but we don't have a nice way to iterate over them. We have to just maintain a looping variable, uh, a looping counter, an index tracker, an index into our array. And you know, it's pretty well established that you want to have a way to iterate. You don't want an index variable unless you want an index variable. Um, which brings me to one of the point we need to find a way to expose the index variable to our users in the loops that we've invented, which I want to get to maybe, uh, maybe today or maybe in the next one. But so what we've written instead is we've introduced into our language, this four keyword, also the in do and yield keywords and any iterable goes here. Uh, optionally you specify, um, a binding name. In this case, we're using it. And then uh, the word in, you can leave this out and it's just always going to be it. So you would just do well, four x is four, one, five, nine. Um, or I could do I or I could do foo, right? And then it would be bound to foo. That's what that binding is when we go into the code. And then we have a choice of keyword here, you can say do, or you can say yield. And if you say do, then it's just an imperative loop. It just runs the code. It doesn't return anything. If you say yield, it's kind of like a for comprehension in Python or Scala, where we're going to essentially map over the thing that you give us, even though we don't have like, we don't have a map function, we don't have closures yet. It's, it's the moral equivalent of mapping. So if you do a yield block over an array, you're going to get an array out of the type that your um, your expression returns. So um, this used to be called squared, but it wasn't really squaring at all. Now it is. Um, and we got to change this back to it. So now this will actually yield an array of ints. Um, if we did it mod two equals zero, then this is going to yield an array of booleans. You'll get um, false, false, false. Those are all odd. Okay, sound cool? So we did the do version and we only did it over arrays so far. I wanna allow it over arrays, strings and optionals. So one step at a time, just a raise, but let's get to the yield, the yield variation. That sounds fun. I think it sounds fun. Um, as is sometimes the case, I've kind of broken ground here. So this is the code that uh, was written last time. I think the font size is fine. I think I just want to zoom the entire IDE. This is the code that was written last time. Um, the only difference is that it's been pulled out of eval expert into eval for expert. So we can pretend things are better organized. And um, I've begun to begin to handle uh, the yield with this resulting type, introducing it back at the beginning. And, and now we get into the stuff we're familiar with. Um, what changed is that I, I just introduced one helper called synth, synthesized variable declaration. And what this does is it cleans up. There were a few places where we were creating a variable, interning it, creating an expression that pointed to the variable, and also adding the variable to scope. And this, um, this does all of those things. And so it saves us a good bit of code. So we synthesize a variable. It reads better now too, because you can see, okay, we're generating a four expert. So 
We first make a scope in a block, then we synthesize a counter variable of type int that's mutable. And then we synthesize an iter-e variable um, that's of type well, whatever we're iterating over um, that's not mutable. And now we're going to try to synthesize this yield value variable. So the difference between the desugared code between the four, I mean, between the do and the yield is that um, this result array will exist in the yield version and we'll be pushing to it just like we've done already the, the um, like straw man here. So this is what we want to generate. So what we have is um, if it's not a do block. So if it's a do block, then we're just going to be none, none, none. We're going to try to deal with having these three things be options. We're going to see if this gets really painful. Um, and then now it gets kind of tough because what type is the yield variable? Well, if we're mapping over an optional, it's an option. If we're mapping over a string, it's a string. If we're mapping over an array, it's an array. Um, this is actually the name. So we'll just call this um, yielded collection. Um, I don't think this is actually the place that we want to list through these types. This was just a little bit of, um, I think it was actually just a little, a little bit of copilot soup. So, um, as soon as I make sense of, what, what this thing is mad at, we can move on. Okay. So that's that. Okay. And then I think it's nice because um, I think the key is that whether we're yielding or not, we still want to move this into a val so that the yield is purely additive. We're only adding instructions, so we don't have to gen this differently if we're not yielding. There's going to be no runtime cost to having this be a let versus the do variation really just has to evaluate um, the block experts. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So let's let's unpack this and um, how is that how is that not all possible cases? You have unit and then you have anything. Is it because is it because I'm writing Scala again, the match, the match position. And then when you put the match in the Scala place in Rust, it you get you get really unhelpful uh, highlighting and error messages. Sorry about that. OK. Um, yeah, the yield variable, I'm sorry, um, it's just um, so let's take this one field at a time. The name can just be, um, yielded call to be extremely explicit type is going to be the yielded type um actually we have we have the resulting type already so um yeah actually we can actually bring this back um Okay, we don't have we don't have the type of the body block yet. Can we evaluate that earlier? We evaluate this once its scope is ready, which means we've added the binding to it. So we can't really know our result type. 
to do the yield variable until we've evaluated the body block. So resulting type can't really happen this early. We need to create the binding. I'll bring this down here and hold on to it. And let's keep writing this. And then I think we're going to yoink it down lower and then see what breaks, see what's not available down lower. Um, The yield initializer, um, it's not going to be a variable. It's going to be some kind of literal. Um, I should probably just turn that off. So we want to, yeah, we can't do this till we know the resulting type because what we want to do is match on the resulting type. And we actually have to self.get type resulting type because this is an ID. So um, this is where we want to do if it's um, unit. You know what? We I don't I don't know if we can assume we've handled um, or something. If we're in here, then it's not unit. Okay, yeah. Let's let's just assume, but the, calculating the resulting type is going to throw away errors. So um, it can be an array. In which case the initializer is going to be um, a typed expression in array literal. Um, either an empty array literal or um, actually we want to we want to call array new with a size. So um, um, I think that's an intrinsic function. Intrinsic function type. Yeah, so we need to generate a call to array new. For now, let's do an empty array literal. Um, so with no elements, type ID. Okay. Um, that array type, I guess. It's just it's just resulting type, I think. Right, because it's already type checked in, and the span can just be uh, whatever we're using for our span. Um, the four x for uh, I want to use like the span of the yield. Uh, Yeah, we'll, we'll just use the span of the body block. So what, what we're doing here, this is we're generating um, this line uh, res, except we're not calling it res, we're calling it yielded call. And we're determining this type first, and then also the inner type. So what is it? Um, we'll just handle array for now. Well, we can go ahead and do optional. Um, it's going to be okay. Well, this initializer, yeah, we're synthesizing a mutable, yeah, a mutable variable. Well, it's going to be mutable for the optional because we're going to set it to something. Okay, so for the optional case, it's going to be kind of like this. Um, and it'll probably be equal to none. And then after we evaluate the block, instead of result.push, it's going to be um, yielded call equals sum. Yeah, it'll always be sum if we're if we're in here. Um, block expert val. So the point here is like mapping over an option. So 
So, um, which means that what it's initialized to is easy. It's just none. Um, we have to supply types with our nuns. Body block dot span. Um, do unsupported uh, array supported um, resulting type in for expert yield. Give ourselves a note there. Okay, not none, none, none. Um, none. And then this is sum of a triple. Okay, but the reason then is I can't, I can't match on it. Uh, yield decals. We can see the type of it. So it's an option of it's an optional variable at ID variable ID type statement type expert. If this is the yield block, then in here you have a variable ID, a type statement, a type expert. Okay. Um, yep. So where did I need, right, I needed a resulting type. And resulting type, it needs to know, okay, well, let's zoom out. How do we, how do we know the resulting type of one of these, of a forex for? The container is determined by this. In the inner type is determined by either the expected type that we were passed, which we're not even handling yet, we'll get to, or the type of the body block. And what I'm what we're talking about here is how can we guess bool if it's not annotated? Well, we're looking at the type of this block. This is a block and its type is bool because the last expression is of type bool. So can I move this iterate stuff and all the yield declarations down below where we evaluate our block. We could evaluate it twice too. Well, no, it's not gonna type check until we add the binding. This of course works, but what above it? So we need resulting type. We don't need to create this yet. This is like our, our end product. Nobody needs this. Iterate variable expert. Oh, I wasn't supposed to move that down. Um, but we don't need our four expert block till way down here. Iterate expert, yeah. The iterate doesn't move. That was my bet. That was my bet. Um, I'm getting that mixed up with the yielded. So the binding variable, where's the other synth? We synth the counter and we synth the iterate back over here 
that would be this guy and this guy. These always exist. So we sense these, we wait, we evaluate this block, now we know what type it returns, and now we synthesize this. And we gotta finish computing this type now, which I'm happy to finish implementing now that we have what it needs. So again, we're gonna have to come back here and make sure this falls back to the type hint. Um, or that it honors the type hint if we're given one. Okay, but this is just new type ID. Um, so here we're making types, we're adding them to our type system and we're returning their ID. Our type system is a VEC of type. It's super simple and then we give back the ID and then we can just work with that. And they're copy types, so it's really nice, easy to work with in Rust. So we say new array. Okay, it's an array type. Um, this is its element type. This is its span. And um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure types even need spans. Type expressions have spans. I don't. I think. I think type needs. Type might need to lose its span. Um. We don't even have span for type. Record defin has a span. Array type has a span. Reference type does not. Optional type does not. Type variable probably definitely does not. OK, well, array type um, lose the span. We'll, we'll to do that. OK. I'm gonna take a quick break, go grab a glass of water, come back, we'll finish these expected types, then we'll see if we can um, cogen this for just array. Okay. Missing my little key caster. There. Maybe it's distracting and useless. Maybe it's nice. I, I actually don't know. Someone tell me. Oh, I was smarter yesterday than I am today. So going over a string, we could produce. Yeah, it should probably just produce array. So here's the thing. Um, for C in hello world, do no yield C dot um, char code. Okay. What's the type? The type is got to be array of char. Oh, I'm sorry, array event. It's got to be. It can't be string. Um, something like this, the type probably can't be string. It probably still needs to just be a uh, array of char. Um, there's probably a world eventually where you do, um, you want to be able to yield just an iterator because you want to do further transformations without building intermediate collections, you know, like Java streams or even Rust, right? You have an iterator until you call collect. That's definitely the efficient way to do it. This isn't, <coughs> sorry, this isn't really a high performance feature like this idea of just making a new array. It's, it's more of like a high level, high level programming convenience thing. Um, anyway, yeah, it, it should just produce array. So I was right earlier when I said new array and, and the type of the element is going to be the, the body block expert type for sure. So that's actually nice. So we actually only have two cases where we can only produce an optional or an array. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just checking, seeing that these were unused and making sure I actually don't need them. 
but I don't. I don't care what the inner type was of these containers before. Not for the, not for computing the result type. Okay, and now um, unsupported iterate type. And then we'll go ahead and self dot uh, type ID to string iterate type. Uh, I just have other, so I can just do type to string other. Okay. Make sense? Same thing as before. If we have yield decals, we're pushing that. And now everything else that we do happens in the while statement. So um, the body block, currently the only, we do, the only thing we do with the body block is we insert the valdef to the beginning. We insert this here we need to now insert this here. And we also need to change this. Um, whew. Statements.insert, the valdef, body block. Is that the, oh, and we push the counter increment. Okay. So this is the trickiest part to change because it's easy to push the push. Let's do that. Um, if, so we'll do our same if let sum here. So right after we push the counter increment is perfect. If let sum yield decals either push to yield array or reassign our optional bar. We'll do that in here. But we can't do that yet because we haven't captured the result of the block experts by assigning it here. We've generated this. So um, the whole body block Okay, so we're inside the while Uh-huh. Um, the code the user provided 
so we're not really doing this. We're doing more the equivalent of like spreading these and putting this at the beginning. When what we really want is our own block with a block inside it. So do we do we have that? We have our while the block that we supply apply to the while statement is not ours it's just body block so that's not actually correct we need we need to make a third block to store these and so that we can reassign so that we can assign the result of this to an expression but to a capture this block as an expression and assign its result to a local variable. So body block is not going to be body scope ID before expert so this becomes our while scope ID. And the binding belongs to it. Everything still belongs to it. The difference is that the body block scopes child scope um it's now going to be a child of our wild block so we make it a child the wild block we evaluate it saying this is its scope make sure that that is how that works Scope ID zero. And the fact that it's called IR block, this whole file used to be IR everything instead of type or type checker everything is indicative that this is really old. Um, yeah, no, it. I guess no one ever actually looks at the scope of these, so that being wrong didn't matter. What more matters is. Um, the scope that we passed in because we evaluated the expressions in the context of the right scope. No, it's all very suspicious, so I'm, I'm not super confident there, but anyway. Oh, we have to actually make a make our while block. Um, where's our where's the while loop? Here. This can't be body block. So this is our while block. Um, let me get this order right. Expression type. Oh, so this pre-type check, so we better get it right. Um, the expression type of this whole thing is likely unit. Yeah. 
that's nice. Scope. Um, oh, we made that. Okay, yes. Statements. Okay. We'll make them and then we're going to push them, push, push them straight in. The span is really the, um, let's say the span of the contents really of the, the user supplied block. Okay. What goes in our while block? The valdef. Valdef is bad, and I was thinking it was bad this weekend. This is the um, uh, iteration element, element, valdef. OK, we push that in. And now we're going to push a val another valdef. Oh, we don't have to do this because now we're just pushing. We're just pushing now. That's nice. Now we don't have to do the push back at the beginning of the user block because the user block just goes. It's really nice. It's really nice. So the user block, the user code reference is a binding called it. Instead of putting that at the beginning of it and shoving everything down, we're just creating a scope around it, creating the variable called it, right? Or, or whatever you name it. And then, um, putting the user's block inside that block, which just feels a lot, a lot cleaner and more, more like composable and nice. Oh, what in the world was I doing? Um, um, block expert, user block expert, um, file def. Let's make a valdef. Mm. Oh, are we ready? We have synth variable dot goal dun, dun, dun. We're gonna make a variable, and then we have to pass in the span. Um, which doesn't matter. And then the initializer. Uh, I gotta go back to remember what we're doing. Oh, the initializer is body block type expert block. Look how that comes together. That's the block that that's the user's block. And it becomes the initializer of this local variable. Um, self asked ident ID. We're calling this block expreval. For better or worse, type ID is body block expert type is immutable it's false and the owner scope is okay let's be real this exists the owner scope is the while scope ID okay And this returns variable ID type statement. Um, user block val def. It's the one we want. Block val expert. And we're going to need this expert because we're going to need to return to this when we push into our destination array.
user block valdef. Okay, let me figure out why my computer is about to take flight. I really don't know. Okay, so we've You are here. <laughs> now what? Right, this is the part we're doing unconditionally because, yeah, and then the push is later. I think, I think that's all we need, the counter increment. This, this goes in the while block still. So the while block, the while block has this now, has this now. It doesn't have this yet. And then it has this. So the increment, oh yep. Yeah. So the increment, and then we're gonna do this. Or yielded, oh yeah. Call dot push block expert val. That's the one. So let's eval a function call. Um, let, um, okay, uh, match. We need to like a local Boolean like as array or as optional result. Um, uh, self eval function call. We're going to synthesize a function call here. And it's in the while scope ID. Yes, it's in the while scope ID. Okay. And we're going to while block statements push um, push fun call. A little bit meta. We're pushing call to push into our block statements and this is a block statement with a call to push in it type statement expression box new push one call type optional let let some assignment some val uh, typed expert some optional sum inner expert Box new uh, val user block val def user block val expert type ID resulting. What is this saying? This is the sum expression. So we're wrapping user block val expert which is just pointing at block expert val. So we're wrapping this, we're wrapping this in a sum. And we're making it the right hand side of an assignment. But assignment like statement assignment box new assignment destination uh okay the destination is yielded our yield expert the value is some val all this boxing <laughs> and the span is still just body block span 
If something goes wrong in here, it's not the user's fault. What? We already pushed this. It's not that, it's the four expert body block spam. Okay, and then that's the assignment. So we just skipped over this because sometimes you just don't want you just want don't want to do the work. So the name is the identifier ID for um, push. The type args are sum. Uh, it's going to be the element type there. Come back to there's no this expert. Look at me labeling function call arguments again. And then the scope ID is the while scope ID. No, you're looking at the wrong thing again. Oh my god. What a mess. It's gotten so mad after the sum. What did I do wrong this time? Friends. Just off the edge of the earth. Oh, it's not a function call. It is a struct. Oh my goodness. Oh, what are we pushing? We're pushing in the this guy. So it's the equivalent of this typing that. Oh, are we just going to let it infer? Hmm. Okay, we'll just let it infer. Not a named argument. Um, so last time I synthesized a function call, it was to length. What did I do for the expression? We actually just make a parse expression of a variable. Which is just identifier ID in a span. Okay. Well, the identifier ID is block expert val. args, namespaces, there is a namespace, array,
So now we're back in our outer forex for initial statements, pushing our yield death. Is it saying these have been moved? It is just because when I matched here, I I owned, I took that option instead of borrowing it. How dare I? Oh, I kind of need it, huh? Because... Oh no, we clone these when we use them. Yeah, right. Is it compiling? Mm -hmm. That was a mistake. That's not needed. It is compiling. That's that's when you spend 50 minutes with it not compiling and you refactor a lot. There's just there's a zero percent chance it's working right now. Um, body scope ID is never used. Um, body block is never mutated. I like that. That's really nice. Um, that's actually your scope. Don't you forget it. Just need it dealing with some warnings. Get things a little bit tidy before we, uh, break it all. Um, uh, okay. Fargo run. Okay, we have to actually like prepare the program, don't we? Like, this is all absolutely invalid. And I don't even have mod, by the way. It's not in the language. We can do equal zero. So, or zero. Um, sure. We're still printing it times it. What we need to do... Okay. Squares. This won't test that we're actually... You know, like we could have a bug where we're always just keeping the type the same. Squares. Um, for it... Or for... Squares, right? Squares. Print int it that's nice four squares print it it don't ask do ah uh, yeah okay it's still nice it's still nice okay maybe it's just yield or nothing Instead of the do. Block x per val is not defined. Okay. Oh, we synthesized this. Oh, and we did push the def. But it's not added to the scope, is it? So the the other two places where I synth variable decal. Um, are we adding them to the scope? Self dot add variable. It pushes variables. It doesn't add it to the um, the scope, though. The only thing we've added to the scope is the binding. How was I able to reference iterate?
Maybe I just lost that in this refactoring. Here's the before version. I don't see scope dot add variable for the iterate at all. Block expert val is not defined. And then we push, push the user block. We push the increment. And then I think we're down here. And it says block X per val is not defined. So it's in the while scope, which is correct. This function call we say is happening in the while scope as well. And this is in yeah, the while scope. The array length function call, we're just passing our scope. Um, that it's not right. That needs to be the four expert scope because that is the one that it's in. I don't think that'll break anything or maybe even not fix anything, but that is the scope of that function call. So then we make the while statement, which is now using the while block. Four expert initial statements. Counter def, iterate def. Boom, boom, maybe yielded call. And then the while block. Oh, and then we push the while. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we just did this, and now we push. So we've just pushed this, the yield. And now we push the while block. And then when we do this inside the while block, it should see yielded call. Because the while block scope... is a child... is a child of the four expert scope. I think I need to do this. I think I need to call add variable. Add variable. I think I have to connect the dots here. Variable dot owner scope dot unwrap or root scope ID. Um,
variable dot ident. Where's the identifier name? Variable ID. Okay, let's wrap this up. Getting tired, but I think we're close. Do we need to add these? I think we do. What's wrong with variable.name? Did we already move variable? <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, I might as well just have taken all these by value because by the time I pull them all out, because now I need the scope ID. This is kind of scuffed too, isn't it? I think that made sense earlier. Okay, yeah, we have to add it to the scope. We have to add it to the scope. So I think I might know why it was working without having added it, having to add it to the scope sometimes. The scopes are for lookup by name, right? But we, we aren't always looking these up by name. Like in the synthesized world, sometimes we have like the expression already built. Um, versus I think in our function call that we're synthesizing down here, where we literally are making an AST expression this is a little different. I think this is where the name needed to be in scope, not just be in variables. Anyway, or yeah, because we've been providing the variable ID. A lot of the synthesized stuff, we've been providing the variable ID. So there's no name lookup here, we have the ID, right? We don't we don't need the name. Here we need the name because we're kind of doing this backwards way of pretending this is the user calling this function so that we can go through all our like thousands of lines of function call machinery without having to like special case at all. So they're in the scope now. And if we run this, missing argument to function push elem. So right, we're calling push and the first argument is actually it's actually the array, which we're not passing. We're just we're just passing the element. So let's make another phone call arg. It's also not a named arg. And it's going to be the array. Um, the yield expert. Have we used that yet here? No, we had not used it yet. So that's got to be right because we used it down here. Okay. And then, um, uh huh. Um, the thing we're yielding has a name and it's called yielded call, I think. So this triple that this thing produces should probably produce its um its identifier ID yielded call. Yeah, the identifier ID would be nice. Do we return that? We could also like get variable. Um, get variable.
we need a helper for synthesizing um, parse expression variable statements like this. Um, and even fun call args. But for now, Well, we're seg faulting. That's not what you want. Not what you want, but we are passing. So all that stuff we generated is valid. Let's do our old trick of dumping our thing. Let's dump our thing. Oh, it's gotten larger because we have two loops. Push two, two. Yielded call in an array event. Well, our county unique is less than length two. These are specializations. Val it three. Val block x for vowels of type n equals yes. Counter unique equal count unique plus one. Push. Yielded call. Block x for val. That's all correct. What kind of unique? It re equals squares. It it does. Yeah. Where is val squares? Oh, right. We're not printing the whole AST. Only. Yeah. We're only printing the four experts. Okay. This time it's unit. And it's printing it out. And there's no builders. That actually, that looks good. Um, I'm pretty excited. I, I don't think whatever issue we're hitting with our seg fault, it's going to be too hard to fix. Okay, so we don't seg fault there. Maybe it's something with our array new. I did an empty array literal, right? And I'm calling push, which should cause it to call grow. Yeah. Be interesting to insert a call to print to print line here. You know, maybe we're going to have to run this through the debugger. Oh dear. The code looks good. Let's see if we can see anything interesting in the in the trace. Code gen. Here's push. Well, probably needs to be it for this session. I mean, that's still a big victory. We're generating, I think, exactly what we want to. Um,
let's let's simplify and make this you know uh, be just over exactly what we expect it to be so like that okay so perhaps our array is corrupt we can also write the exact code that it's desugaring to 12581 or squares sorry squares That works, but does this work? No, it says by now this should be populated and it doesn't code gen. I think that's this something to do with the empty array literal. Um, yeah, we can't infer a type for this. One I guess I'm a little bit suspicious that it's calling the wrong array push in our version. Let's not trace so we can see our uh, see our thing. Push two two. So let's dump all the types and see what those specializations are. So um I think I have a flag. Dump module. Oh good, it still works. So it's push two two yielded call block extra val. Two two That's int int. So push is polymorphic in space array push. Two two. So it picked type int for what? And the type int for is that for each argument? Look for um, specialize. Um, let new name, new name. So we push an underscore to the way we build that name we're looking at is we push an underscore to the end of the name. So that's push. And then uh, the two, each one is um, a type arg passed to the function. So I would only expect to see one there. I would expect type IDs to be of length one. This is being logged at debug. We could try. See if this is a specialization problem. 
lot of array int. 2 is int. Solve params. Adding type param t is update int to scope for specialized function length. Existing specialization for length. 0 is int. I find existing specialization for function length types int. To scope for push, T int to scope for push. Adding type ram T into scope. One last thing to check. Array push. So it should be push of int, right? So to know if the problem is in type inference. Let's pass int explicitly. Push two. It's only called push two. Push to array element that looks like a good specialization, and then there's the there's the regular push. Oh wait, now there's only one. Push two. It was calling push two two. Am I crazy? We removed the debug. And remove the explicit type hint here. Back to none. Okay, look, we get push two, two. It like double specializes it or something. Which would be very, very bad. This is all variables. See a lot of the variables we synthesized here, which is cool. Hmm. Well, yeah, I don't think I can solve this uh, tonight. This will have to be a mystery for next time. Last thing. Let's try debugging it. I think this is what I have to do. Now we can LDB. And we can be main. And we can frame variable. 
start running. Oh no. Ooh. All right. Okay. Is it in? Yeah, in. Counter's uninitialized. X's is a pointer. Um, but I can dereference it. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. So even though we generated all these statements and expressions, in the debug info and these extra lines because of the spans we can't really step through it at that granularity we would need to generate we would need to generate that source almost yeah that's interesting um frame variable Let's um, look at yielded call, I guess. Sorry. All right. Print. Pass these four because it doubled. This, this thing clearly got pushed to. And then we can par um, its capacity. One twenty-five eighty-one zero. That's fine. So that's valid. Yielded call is good to go. But squares is null. Oh no. And where what's our current location? Oh I don't know. This address is compiler generated code and function length two. That has no source code associated with it. Bad access. I think we are about to iterate over squares. So squares is null. So we're just not returning. And I think it might be just that our lexical blocks, um, we're making heavy use of these little lexical blocks that are actually expressions that I've never actually used before. So I, I bet you, I bet you it's just uninitialized. Um, let's run again. And, and so we get to here, right? And we, we confirmed that, okay, sorry. We get to here, we ran the loop. And we can we know we confirmed last time that yielded call is correct. It's had three elements pushed to it and it's valid memory. And at this point in time, squares is null. So that's definitely the problem. So that is really cool that the debug info actually came in handy. I kind of had this theory that if the compiler was scuffed, the debug info would also be scuffed, obviously, you know, that it wouldn't be that helpful for debugging the compiler. Because it's not really what it's used for. It's assumed to be correctly generated by the compiler so you can debug your program. But in this case, it's actually really useful. 
we have a smoking gun here that squares is null and we can we can work back to that uh, we can see that it's got the correct type here too in the debug info which is just so neat anyway um that's definitely it for this time uh thanks for watching uh hopefully next time we can wrap this up and get get these yield expressions creating arrays which would actually make the language kind of nice to work in there's definitely some some things i might rewrite um see how nice it feels all right well thanks again